Hi everyone, this is Adi Olvera with uh, Voting Rights Task Force, also a member of Ballots for Bernie, and also part of the California Election Integrity Coalition. Mm -hmm. I'm a volunteer, I also uh, do poll working on Election Day. Um, I love to be involved and do part of my civic duties, just uh, participate in, in any election um, activities that might be helpful to protecting um, our election process, so election systems, and your vote, my vote. And um, let's see, I'm also here with Nancy and Kathy, who will be helping us throughout the day. She might chime in. Um, Kathy and I went to our poll workers training last this week, and so we have some updates for you. And uh, all you know Nancy, because she's an election integrity activist. She's been doing this for a long time at Monterey and now in Contra Costa County helping us out. And during the primary, she also helped us with the ballot count observation and monitor uh, what the counties were doing um, to process ballots after the votes were casted. So um, I'm going to start off with just talking about uh, some of the poll worker training um, and chime in with some uh, questions. Um, if you can hear us well, please let us know. If you need us to pick up the mic, then uh, we'll get it closer to us. Uh, so... Let's see, uh, the uh, poll worker training here in Contra Costa was um, fairly interesting, actually a lot more interesting than it was during the primary. I felt like uh, they prepared better. Um, last, in the primary, they had music going off in the background and I couldn't hear the speaker. And so, you know, and this time they had a really well put together PowerPoint that went through each section uh, clearly. I did feel they went kind of rather fast through it, so, um, uh, because I'd gone through the primary, I kind of saw things that were not being taught this time around. But it could have been because the primary is slightly different from the general. Um, and I did learn a few things. So um, let's go through a few things here. Um, they really went into detail into what was the role of the clerk and what it would look like on the day of. So on the day of... Um, Prior to opening, poll workers might get together on Monday and, and set up the area. Um, it's the role of the clerk to help arrange the furniture, set up the uh, M100 machine, which is what they use, uh, the ballot scanners that they use in Contra Costa County, and the Automark. The Automark is a machine they use for uh, folks with disabilities um, who can't vote um, standing or don't have, uh, they have a disability in their arms, they can't use them, or... Um, just almost anything. And um, they recognize that a lot of individuals in California have disabilities, so they expect a lot of use out of, out of the auto mark. And anyone um, whose disabilities are not um, visual, they trained us to say, hey, don't assume this person um, doesn't have a disability. You just offer the auto mark. And so that was really nice because they didn't teach that at the primary. Uh, so say, hey, not all disabilities are visible. Always offer the auto mark and tell them um, that it's available, what it is, and people will choose, self-select whether they want to um, vote standing or use the auto mark. So uh, if you have a disability and you want to vote on Tuesday, that's um, you have that option. And if the auto mark is not set up, uh, please call your ROV and report that because it should be set up by 7 in the morning. And um, also... <laughs> Um, if it's not working, make sure you call your OV and make them send a tech out to fix it. In the primary, our auto mark wasn't working, and when we called the techs out to come fix it, um, uh, they couldn't come out. They weren't sending anybody. And there was two or three disabled individuals that had vision, that, you know, visibly, we could tell visibly they needed the auto mark, and unfortunately weren't able to use it and we had to make other accommodations for them so um but it it was a disappointment not to have a tech come out and fix that so if you don't see the auto mark um, available uh, working or functional just please report it asap and uh, let ballots for bernie know that this is what happened to you to you or at your poll site kathy you have a question just to say that uh, the training i went to they emphasized that any uh, voters or um, workers, for that matter, can always call the headquarters in Martinez and have their questions answered, um, voters and workers. 
And a question. Um, how did you help if you were visually impaired? How did you help the voters? Um, oh. The machine, actually, I think it, I might talk to you. Okay. And then if, if it doesn't, they can use the assistance of a poll worker. That's, uh, that's the answer I was looking okay. for when the machines were down. Yeah. Uh, because I know in Arizona, I, I went in with somebody who was impaired mm -hmm. and uh, helped her mark her ballot at her request. Okay. So you, I do believe, well, in California as well as Arizona, you can request someone to go in and help you. Now, I'm a, a voter that uh, does have a lot of questions about electronic voting machines, the safety. So um, if, op, if possible to have them vote by paper ballot and not the auto mark, in my opinion, to Oops. emphasize I think um, in our county, you stick the ballot in the auto mark, and it marks it for you. And then you would go run it in the M100. Okay. I think that's my understanding. It just uh, helps you fill out your ballot. Okay. So it's not like it saves it on electronically on the machine. Good to know. Thank you. I yeah. did not know that. That's a great question. So um, the other things we have to do is post signs as the role of the clerk everywhere. The bilingual signs, the rules for a uh, poll watcher, um, how to handle maybe safety and um, what numbers to call if there's any problems. So if, um, uh, let's see, um, the other things we need to do is assist the inspector if anything goes wrong. Uh, make sure that um, we're um, just kind of know every role in the room so that if you had to be moved around, be ready to do that. So they do uh, train each poll worker in each section. Just um, everybody gets a little bit of each section information. I wish it was a little bit more thorough. I did ask a question uh, for clarity, and um, I didn't get the nicest response, and I'll go into that later, I'd say. So <clears throat> during the voting process, they make sure that we're being nice to people, greet people, and it's always been my um, experience on election day that it's really hard to get a smile out of a poll worker. So, you know, remember to smile and make people feel like this is a great uh, opportunity uh, to be involved in uh, as, as a, a voter, as a citizen, um, and that uh, we should be very happy to exercise our rights. So if you're a poll worker, please smile. And if not, you know, because you're a little busy just... Try to put a circle, happy face pin mark on your hand. And when you, every time you look at your hand, it'll remind you to smile. Um, because people come out really stressed. Maybe they're on, not on the voter <clears throat> list um, and have, are having some other complication. Um, and they've been online for a long time. And they're pretty angry by the time they get to you. So um, remember to smile. Yes. You want to say also, something? Also, if they're young, I ask them if they're a first-time voter. Now, this is as a poll observer. Um, and I congratulate them, make a big deal out of the fact that they're voting for the first time. Yeah. yeah. Give them recognition yeah. for that. I think what I did last time was I offered to take their picture. Cool. Because I wanted them to see that I was excited about them voting for the first time. Nice. And people are always happy about that. So. Okay. Uh, what I'll see, uh... The inspector has obviously a lot of responsibilities. Um, their main responsibility is making sure that us um, poll workers um, um, know what we're doing, that we're working in sync. Um, they also uh, have to recruit one of us to take the ballots at the end of the night back to the ROV. Um, and there's other amazing things that they do. Um, but. They really make sure that we're doing our, our job as poll workers, or we're also known as clerks. Um, um, if you're going to be a poll watcher, and Nancy will go into this later, one of the things that we're supposed to do is check the polling place location. When we get there, we're setting up, but just go around and check. Make sure nothing looks weird, suspicious, safety issues. So uh, poll, work, poll watchers should probably do that too. Just look for any suspicious activity. Um, and no campaigning signs within the boundaries. Right, no campaigning signs within the boundaries. Um, 100 feet from the door 
of the voting location. If you're at a school site, it's not the driveway entrance of the parking lot. It's from the door. And if there's a car that rolls up with their candidate's sign all over their windows, you need to ask them to move their car 100 feet away from the pool site. Um, and they, I had to do that once, and they're very nice about it. And the gentleman did say, who are you? And I said, I'm a pool worker. And he says, okay. And he went and moved his car. So don't forget to mention uh, what your role is before you tell someone that they need to move away or flip their shirt inside out if they're wearing a candidate shirt or something. Okay, so um, there's a lot of materials they trained us on, and uh, one is that we have a roster of voters. Can you see that? And what that is is every time when we come in and work, we all sign in, and that shows that we showed up to work that day. We're a volunteer that day. We do get a small stipend, but it's not very much. And um, uh, we're going to poll workers work from 6 o'clock in the morning all the way through like maybe 9.30 or 10 p.m. Even the polls close at 8, there's a lot of stuff that has to be done. And uh, we do get a lunch and a few 10-minute uh, breaks here and there, but uh, for the most part, um, uh, it's a long day. Um, and some of us are required to go the day before and set up. So it's it really is um, um, a huge commitment uh, from a poll worker. And the other thing that we were required to do is go to one or two trainings, depending on your role. And so you're also contributing your time in those aspects. The other thing they showed us how to use is to uh, this poll um, roster where you come in and when you're voting, you're going to have your name, the type of ballot card they're going to give you. Uh, what, uh, what else is on there? Um, the, uh, your, well, your signature line. That scan code that you see on that column, that's what gets used when this list at the end of the day, all their ballot materials, they end up going to the ROV. And it's somebody's job at the ROV to scan that line that has a signature. And when they scan that line, the computers know you voted. So if you voted in person and you signed your name and you mailed in a vote by mail, um, or a provisional envelope at another site, they're going to know you voted once or three times. So um, <clears throat> this is rare, okay? This is hardly ever happens, and they truly try to make a big deal out of this to hide the amount of election fraud that happens. So um, please don't take that comment as if that's something that worries me because it doesn't. Um, and the other thing that um, is really important about this is that it has a people's full name. So if a poll uh, worker, you know, asks the person what their name is and they don't know, if there's two people named um, Luis Aceves, then they may say, what street do you live on? And then they can tell the two apart and have them sign on the right place. Um Let's see, the other thing was that, which was interesting to me, is that, you know, the list is usually this way. The person is looking at it, but the person coming in might sign upside down. That's totally okay. Um, you don't have to flip it around each time. You know, just let the person sign on the line. doesn't have to be the right direction. Um, after the voter signs in, um, they're going to get a little ballot ticket like this and the number that the poll worker writes on it 7001 or 7003 or whatever they're just going to get one of those squares it's going to they're going to take that ticket to the ballot table and at the ballot table they'll know which ballot to give them each ballot has three cards because that's how much voting stuff we're voting on this year and at least in our county it's three cards um and um You'll, um, uh, you'll have to make sure that that ballot you got has the same number as the ticket you gave the person. And they'll put it away. They'll put that little uh, ticket away once they've given you your ballot. So the voter will take their ballot, go vote on a booth or on the Automark machine, um, and then go to the M100 machine. And I might have a picture of that to show you. Um, and then it'd be nice to know if poll workers out there, um, yeah, one more page. Let's see. there's yes. one right here. Let's 
see, can you see that? That machine right there. So, hope that's big enough for you guys. If I find a better one, I'll show you guys. Um, that uh, machine is where they put their ballots and it gets um, sent down to the bottom. Like once it goes through, it just kind of falls to the bottom and they'll pile up in there. That machine should not be opened up all day or all night unless it gets full and you'll have two or people who may pull things out um, and but they have to sign off that they had to do that but for the most part it should handle all ballots from the beginning of the morning to the night um, and they also have a spare uh, place to put them if the machine breaks down there's a place they could open it up just to throw ballots in that the machine isn't counting and once a technician comes out, those ballots will be run through the machine once it's fixed. Or they get processed at the ROV, but they in a different slot in that same machine than where the ballots that are counted go in. So um, that's really neat to pay attention to as a voter, because if you machine, your vote has to go through the machine. Um, Kathy, do you have, let me see that page. This shows the top of the M100. Okay, so this is the... Top. top that's the top of them 100 there your ballot goes in and um, this is the blue bag here that uh, your uh, if you are a, if you are a vote by mail you just want to drop it off at a precinct you don't have to tell anybody you just go and drop it in the blue bag um, that is usually near the door and you can leave don't forget your I voted sticker <laughs> okay so um Below that place where you scan your card is that um, slot, but they would only be open if the machine was down. May I make a comment? Yeah. Um, it's important that if you are turning in your vote mm -hmm. by mail, that you do put it in the blue bag and not put it through the scanner because the poll workers have to tabulate all the vote by mails that have been dropped off at that site and everything that tabulates through the scanner and they have to balance out their numbers, kind of like doing a checkbook. And these people have been volunteering, getting at the site by 6. It's now 9.30, maybe. The count is not balancing act out where are the errors. So please make sure you put the vote by mail in the right bag and well, not through a scanner. Well, you can put a vote by mail envelope in this No, scanner. you'd have to take it out your ballots. Right, yeah, don't so, do that. Yeah, yeah, make sure, please, make sure. Yeah. Um, so, um, one of the inter interesting things that I found out was that um, in the primary, when we were done as a poll worker, we had to count everything, count how many vote by mails were dropped into the blue bag, how many provisionals were dropped into the blue bag, how many ballot cards were um, in were used through the M100. So you do take them out of the machine at the end of the day, count them, and put them in a box that gets sealed with a signature. This year, we're not going to be counting ballot cards, which for me is kind of alarming. It's like, why not? We should know how many ballot cards leave the poll site before they get to the ROV. Yeah. So it's a significant mm -hmm. change. And I'm, as an election integrity uh, activist, I'm really concerned about this because, you know, if the two people that are driving the um, ballots to the ROV are in cahoots, they're, you know, a big chunk of votes can just go disappearing if they really wanted to. Um, but, you know, we're hoping that their integrity is high and everything that leaves the uh, poll site arrives at the ROV, but why not just count them? It only takes us 15 minutes to do that, and they've eliminated that because, you know, poll workers uh, want to go home earlier. But, hey, I've already contributed um, all my time, this all day and all this time, so I'm pretty much committed to counting the additional ballots. The only thing we're going to be counting is provisionals. How many provisionals um, leave uh, the poll site from the blue bag. We're not going to be counting vote by mails that get dropped off, and we're not going to be counting um, the ballot counts per uh, the trainer. So I was very disappointed about that. Kathy, you want to add anything? Did you get that message? Yes, I did, but it's two weeks ago now that I took the poll worker training, 
It was a quick 90 minutes, a lot to cover, and I was, wasn't was clear about whether we counted the vote by mails. I know we counted provisionals. But I agree with you that the, the count should be done at the polling place. Yeah. I mean, a lot, I don't know, a lot of you who are in election integrity workers, um, until we have... Uh, Voting machines that are not hackable, we are strong advocates for hand-counted ballot. But um, we don't get that anywhere, really, uh, except at the ROVs or through these M100 machines. And not everybody trusts, so uh, because they still have the capacity to be hacked because the memory cards could be messed with when they leave the site. So um, not being able to count the cards before they leave... Uh, the vicinity really scares me. So um, if you're a poll worker out there, please chime in on this if this is something new in your area and if um, they're going to be allowing you to count the ballot cards before you leave your precinct. That would be great to know. And one thing they didn't mention this year, which I was disappointed, was because um, they didn't mention in the primary either, is that each poll site is required by law to post uh, a receipt of the election results um, and on the window. Uh, poll workers, at the end of the night, we signed those. They didn't tell us we had to sign anything again this year. They didn't tell us. They, our inspector tells us when you get there. That's how I knew last year that I had to do that. The inspector at the end of the night was telling us to sign this, sign that. We're like, what are we signing? So this time they didn't tell us about those receipts again. They're going to be posted on the door, uh, visible to any voter for three days um, outside that poll site. And sometimes janitors of that place where um, the election happened, they don't know what that is, so they remove them. Or the uh, people who pick up the machines the next day sometimes remove them from the wall. That's what happened at um, my poll site. I went back to where I worked to look for the receipt and it was gone and the church person said, well, the guy that actually picked up the stuff took it. And I was like, it's supposed to be there for three days. Um, so that people who vote in that precinct can go see uh, what the results are. So they didn't train us about those receipts again. I only know because I worked primary. So um, I'm really disappointed that they're not letting people know that there's these receipts where they can go see the results. And poll workers, you're gonna be responsible for um, signing that as a witness to the result, election results. So make sure you look at those numbers and try to remember, hey, did we, uh, did I mostly hand out um, Hillary um, uh, ballots to uh, uh, Hillary votes or Bernie votes or, you know, that's what was happening through my mind in the primary. That's not going to happen this time around. But last year, I remember just how many uh, Democratic ballots I was giving, how many Republican ballots I was giving, how many uh, libertarian bar uh, ballots I was giving out. I mean, and I had a gauge of how, what was the high frequency and your receipt should reflect that. You may not know an exact number, but you should, you should have a reflective percentage wise idea of that, of what you see. So just kind of pay close attention to what you see happening, um, and what you may be happening on those, uh, receipts or anything you sign, uh, for the day. So the fact that you can't count the cards you'll be you know you'll be signing off on materials that leave the place but you can't count them you it's kind of a disappointment so i'll leave that one alone because i think you guys all get it um what else uh let me go i'm just going through my book really quick to see if i'm missing anything one thing they didn't train us last year was the master voter list during the primary we could not find the master voter list and no one knew where that was. And, and I remember there being reports at other from other uh, ballot poll workers and ballot count observers saying they didn't know where there was either. So um, the master voter list is different from the voter index. Okay, The master voter list tells the poll workers or the poll clerks that everyone who's eligible to vote in that precinct, whether it's vote by mail or whether it's... Um, uh, in person and if someone's on a list they should at least be on the master voter list so if they're not on both places they teach you some troubleshooting to do and the most the easiest thing is to just give the person a provisional to vote on 
Um, so that might be the biggest problem we might see in terms of election fraud is people not on a list um, because it won't matter what party you are, you'll still be able to vote for any candidate you want. Um, but not being on a list might be a way for your vote not to be casted. So make sure you get a, a provisional envelope. If you're not on the list and you vote that day, don't let anybody turn you away. Um, make sure that when you fill out your provisional envelope that you tear off the receipt because that receipt 35 days after the election, you'll be able to go on the uh, registrar voter, the ROV's website or the SOS website maybe and see if your vote was counted as cast. So, um, well, if your ballots were counted, it won't tell you which <laughs> votes were casted, um, but it'll tell you that your ballots were processed, but it won't actually tell you if all three cards, for example, in Contra Costa County were casted, but you'll know that in general, at least one of your cards in your ballot were, were processed and it'll be um, available 35 days after election day. But that receipt um, is important. On the um, Contra Costa County, your envelope is, you know, fairly big, kind of the size of this. It's pink. And when you seal it, the envelope, you'll seal it like this. You know, it'll seal at the top, and the bottom part is what you're going to rip off. And that's what you take. And that bottom part in Contra Costa County is white, um, and it has a number. And that number is what you're going to type in that website 35 days later, and it'll tell you if your vote was counted. For vote by mail, that is going to probably be the same issue. Vote by mail, you'll be able to go on the site pretty immediately after you've sent your your vote by mail. Um, you should be able to go on a week later and or maybe two weeks later and find if your, um, your ballot was um, counted um, and processed. And um, so and I'll, we're probably going to wrap this section up now unless people have any questions. And... Um, we're going to have Nancy give us a sec, uh, some updates on which her communications with ROV. So, and if I remember, I'll just chime in on some other points. Kathy, do you have anything to add? Not so far. Not so far. Okay. Thank you. Last week, uh, I went to the ROV's office and spoke to the assess assistant and had several questions and uh, first of all, I was very pleased. He walked me over to the warehouse where the ballots are counted, and there was a whiteboard with all these numbers, exactly what I wanted to see, the date, the number of mail, vote by mail that was received from the post office, from the various drop-off sites, from early voting sites. It was very well established what votes are coming from what area when they're turned in. Uh, so that, that pleased me, uh, keeping right on track day by day of what's coming in. Um, early votes cast, well, any time that they were received by the ROV by mail, and those from early voting sites from Monday, this last Monday through Wednesday, they will be counted, and in the first run of numbers, uh, being given at 8 o'clock. Uh, any ballots received by Wednesday will be... You may screw in a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any ballots received by Monday will be... They've been processed. Um, and they will be tabulated at 8 o'clock Tuesday night. So the first run of ballots, numbers will be from all the early voting, vote by mail, uh, ballots that have been tabulated. One thing I was pleased to see is that there's going to be two scanners um, at each polling place. I was at one polling station last during the primary, and their scanner had broken down early afternoon. They had not had a replacement, and the ballots were going in the side bins but those side bins were filling up um, by 8 o'clock. Uh, it was by 7.30. I was probably at that voting station, and uh, it was getting pretty full. So this time, with the huge turnout they are expecting, they will have two scanners per voting site. So I was very glad to hear that. 
Um, I asked about voter, excuse me, poor poll worker training. 30% of the poll workers are new this election, but they have doubled the number of poll workers. So there should be plenty of people, experienced and new people, working the polls so that you should be able to get in and get out fairly quickly. Now, I do recommend that everyone fill out their sample ballot to make it easier to complete the actual ballot rapidly so that the people can filter through um, on voting day. Don't be in the booth trying to decide one way or another. Have your sample ballot filled out and that will make it easier for everyone. Uh, one of the questions I had for the assistant ROV is about seeking high school students um, to work at polls. And I was so pleased to hear that 500 high school students have already been trained to work the polls. Not only does this encourage them to be interested in elections, um, they're getting community service probably for this, but also to actually experience democracy in action, to actually see people come to the polls, the process, to have some faith in the process. Hopefully that faith is well deserved. Yes, Kathy. I'd just like to say you get paid $125 for working the day, and that's not a small amount of money to me. Okay. And my granddaughter, I'm very proud to say, is going to be a poll worker, and she'll get that money too. Wonderful. I know she'll spend most of it on books. <laughs> on books? Yes. Oh, that, well, that's good. <laughs> you should see her room. <laughs> um, okay, and uh, also encourage anyone that can to vote before Tuesday. Well, that means tomorrow uh, to get into the booths, uh, the early voting stations. There are several in uh, Contra Costa County. The one for Central Contra Costa County is in Concord at the Salvation Army voting site. Uh, and as if you can vote tomorrow, please do because they're expecting a lot, a high turnout, which is wonderful. We've got to get people to vote. So this is very, very important. <clears throat> I also asked about provisional ballots from the primary election. And uh, in Contra Costa County, 87% of the provisional ballots were counted. The main reason for not counting a provisional ballot is that there is no registration form filed with the ROV. They did not have a voter registration form. So I encourage all voting rights advocates and anyone giving out uh, voter registration forms mm -hmm. to, first of all, make sure the person, okay, when I'm registering people, I give them the responsibility to mail it in, uh, that they have to take it, fill it out. I have sample registration forms of what you have to fill in, not get confused about American Independent Party and no party preference. I emphasize that, you know, look on the ballot if you want this or that party or no party affiliation because that's very confusing for a lot of people. But they won't need to know that this year, right? No, well, this is anybody. I'm, I'm talking now about voter registration oh, forms I see. Oh, I see. if you haven't done it yet. So oh. encouraging people because there are so many problems. Okay, if 87% of the provisional ballots counted um, and the main reason for not counting provisional ballots was not having a voter registration form on file. So what I'm encouraging them to do is make sure you tear off the bottom of the application form and keep that. It's got a number on it that matches the application number. Uh, within a couple of weeks you will receive a voter card from a postcard size from the register of voters. Yeah, about this size. Yes, make sure you keep that. It's in our county. It's yellow. Uh, it has the party that you, they have recorded as what your party affiliation is, or no party affiliation. Make sure you put that and your registration receipt in a safe place, so you have proof that the following election, 
you have registered and this is what's on file. I actually saw somebody's uh, card, confirmation from the ROV's office, that said Democrat, and in, on the roll books they had Republican. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. Obviously, he had proof because the card was there. I saw it. And the register, the uh, poll worker said it said Republican on the uh, voter roll. So have people keep the information they receive about registering to vote. If you have registered to vote, you haven't received anything for a couple of weeks from the ROV, call the office and say that you have uh, you registered with this number on the application and that you're wondering why you haven't received a postcard saying that you have been registered. And again, make sure that card says the correct party affiliation you want. Now, as an observer, um, I've been doing this for about 10 years and uh, going out of state for election protection volunteer as well as in state with Save Elections Monterey County. And um, I'm just interested in doing it. Even without an organization, I have gone in and just observed and taken notes. So I obtain a list of polling sites from the ROV I usually go what's close to home, but you can just select whatever area you're interested in if you think there's going to be uh, problems with any voting area. I was in Arizona with election protection and working in a, a Latino area, and there were two big SUVs with people, large men in suits, kind of a threatening well, not their appearance. It's just intimidating. having a, intimidating. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That's the right word. It's just having these big blackened windows, SUVs, and in suits. It's just not what you expect at your polling place. Uh, we did not have any problems at the site I was in, but our next polling site did have problems. So, have paper. Pen, be ready to take notes. Uh, this last time at, during the primary, there were three first-time voters that had problems. Um, all vote. One could not even vote. I don't think she got a provisional ballot. She was not on the rolls. They called the ROV's office. She was not listed. So they, if I remember correctly, they did not even give her a provisional ballot because there's absolutely no record at ROVs or on the polling list of her being registered. Um, another gentleman, the one that showed me his card saying he had registered as a Democrat and he voted provisionally. Um, so just to be observant, um, I always have a camera with me. I don't take pictures inside. I took a picture like of this card by this person. I also always have election protection numbers. Now, election protection, the National Lawyers Guild, uh, they work with Common Cause and other organizations. They have phone numbers for English, Spanish, uh, of numerous Asian languages, all the way from China around to Pakistan, and even uh, Arab uh, telephone Telephone numbers if you speak Arabic. Arabic. So there, they, there are people at the hotline that speak numerous languages. That if you have any problem, you can call up Kathy. They told us at our poll worker trainings for Contra Costa County that there are translators available for 80 different languages. I find that astonishing, but they said that's true. Okay, good. Yes, yeah, so if you have any problem... Uh, call the ROV or election protection hotline numbers. Now, this is another thing I bring to the poll. I have little post-it notes. If I haven't already um, made copies of the voter hotline numbers, I have little post-it notes and with whatever language they're speaking, uh, and I write down the number and give them the post-it notes. When I'm out at the polls, I look for various things. One thing is it's required to be posted, the voter's right to know sign. It's a very large 
poster size sign. I look for that. I look to make sure the people know, the poll workers are stating um, correct information, especially during the primary where it's co so confusing about uh, no party preference and what they should do. Numerous poll workers said, well, they showed me this little sign, small sign, that they had next to the where they're signing in. And many poll workers told me that they could not say anything to the voters regarding what their rights were with no party preference. So you have a right to choose a Democratic Party or Libertarian Party ballot. They just said, well, you read this little thing. Most people were not reading that. Um, so just be there listening. I never talk to the poll workers. I go in, I introduce myself to the inspector. Um, if the inspector's not busy, or, and then I just wait, and then when it clears a little bit, which probably won't happen, we'll probably be full of people every time, but just ask who the inspector is, and I introduce myself with whatever organization I happen to be working with that election. Um, just as a common courtesy, um, I never speak to the voters unless I observe something, and then I go outside and talk to them after the fact. Um, unfortunately, as an observer, you are observing. You cannot participate. Even though you see something that is incorrect happening, you have to just record it and present it to the ROV, Board of Supervisors, um, whomever afterwards. Kathy? Can't you mention it to the inspector? Um, yes, and I have done that uh, in the primary when a uh, no party preference person was given a re Republican ballot. I did speak to the inspector afterwards on that one. It depends on what's happening, uh, general right. observation, and how smoothly the polling place is working. Um, there was only one polling place that I was 100% confident of the ins inspector running everything so smoothly, making sure NPP's voters really knew what their rights were. Uh, most, many, many other precincts and polling sites, uh, it was not clear that they had a choice. Of Which what was balance. the one that you did it right? Um, I can't remember the particular site right now, okay. but it was one around Central Contra Costa County, around Concord. Ah. But, but she was an inspector that had been doing it a number of years, and she was right on top of it of knowing the rights of the voter. Uh, it, but to be to be fair on this, this was a very, very confusing primary with no party preference. I mean, California doesn't usually get to have a say. And the turnout and the no PPs, uh, it, it, it was a challenge for poll workers, but I think they should have been very specifically trained in anticipation of all the Bernie supporters that there would be a lot, and 27%, uh, I believe it is, of uh, Contra Costa, 22.60% of Contra Costa voters are no party preference. So they should have made sure that poll workers were well trained on that. I just remembered a few things I want to say, but I want to make sure you're done. Uh, Yes. Okay. So Mario mentioned uh, on the comments that um, don't forget to mention the eligibility research station. And uh, that's something new. Um, I did mention some of the components of it, but not under the umbrella of the eligibility research station. We didn't have that during the primary, which would have been a good idea. When you go to the roster table where <clears throat> to sign that you're about to vote, they give you your ballot ticket, and then you go to the ballot table to vote. That's all we had during the primary, and we're, we're repeating that for the general. Now there's a new table called the Eligibility Research Station. This is going to be for voters um, who are not on the roster. Well, let's find out why they're not on the roster. Some things mm -hmm. you'll know is the voter is a permanent vote by mail. That's why they, they're not on the – they might be on the roster, but as it'll say BBM. Um, not everybody will be on the roster to sign in. 
because they're not expected there that day. Um, so the voter's name is on a combined voter roster and it was just overlooked. Maybe the poll worker didn't find him because the person said, my name is Jill Baker, but she's in there as Jillian Baker and just didn't say the right full name. So always double checking the roster is going to be important. Um, the voter's name has changed, either got married or got divorced, and that became an issue. Um, the voter may have moved and didn't re-register. So uh, those are one of the, the primary reasons why someone would go to the ER station and there'll be someone at that station who would know what to do um, and to try to get this person to vote that day or to get them to vote provisionally. Um, so that's um, some new things that they trained on this year. Um, some things that I noticed was that they didn't train us on this time around was the layout of the room. They just tell us um, what, um, can you click on the done on the screen? They told us, uh, just hit done, sorry, something's wrong with our screen. Um, they told us last time in the primaries how to organize the room, um, the best way to place things. This time they didn't go over that, um, but Maybe I missed that part. I did walk in about a few minutes late. Did they cover that with you, Kathy? That wouldn't have been in the first few minutes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so they didn't uh, cover it. Um, and then uh, we went to separate days, so if she didn't wasn't taught how to organize the room, then um, they didn't give it out. So I'm guessing the responsibility is going to be on the inspector. Maybe that day the inspector tells everyone how to lay it out. And they may be emphasizing preparing the room on a Monday versus preparing the room at 6 in the morning. Um, so we're not sure. Um, they didn't say anything about what happens if an inspector doesn't show up or what happens if another poll worker doesn't show up that's needed. Um, they didn't talk about that. And in the primary, I believe it was somewhere in either uh, Alameda County or Richmond, uh, in Richmond area, in Contra Costa, I can't remember which, where uh, an inspector didn't show up. And so people didn't vote till midday or something because they were waiting for what to do. Uh, poll workers didn't know how to step up because they didn't know the role of the inspector. So your poll worker book may tell us what to do, but they didn't mention it. And I think that would have been a nice discussion to have as part of our training. Um, because I, I can't, I can imagine what it was like in Alameda. I believe it was Alameda where that happened, how nuts that might have felt and how many voters didn't get to vote because they had to go back to work. Um, I had asked, uh, at the end of the training, the, uh, one of the, uh, trainers, um, who is an ROV staff, cause I recognized her, if the number of people on the roster that were signed in would be the same number of ballots and voters that we could expect in the M100 machine because it actually populates it says number of voters not number of ballots because there's three cards per ballot so it, it will tell you number of voters at the end of the you know as people vote and it takes cards it'll tell you um, so I was asking her Number of people signed in on the roster should reflect the number of voters on the screen of the M100. And she said, no, but that doesn't concern you. This is not something in your area. And I said, oh, I know. I know I won't be worried about that, but I'm worried now. Can you answer my question? And I'm not verbatim, but essentially I was actually getting fired up when she told me it was not something I should be concerned about because, you know, I'm an election integrity activists I hope um, not a good one but I try to be and um, so I was getting fired up but I try to keep my cool and as soon as I said um, okay no worries I'll just ask Scott which I know is one of her bosses and she just got you know like that and then she said started getting really nice to me and then started saying well it's because last time in the primary created a backlog for poll workers and poll workers had to spend um, you know I don't know, it's just a, a, an, an answer that I didn't even understand related to my question, and um, she ended there, and I didn't even care to probe more because I knew um, I was just going to talk to Scott, because Scott's a nice guy, and he usually follows through on all my questions, so um, she just didn't want to deal with me that day, um, and I was um, genuinely interested. Um, yes, I mean, this is... <laughs> 
this is what in election integrity is all about, that it should, what, what reason would it not match the number of people that have signed in and the number of people that have voted put their machines through? Yeah, yeah. That's basic. Yeah. If you hold this, I'll actually show okay. people the screen that it'll look like on the M100 machine because there is a, sna a picture of that in here. So, when you put your ballot in the machine, you'll have those uh, buttons and a screen that'll tell you number of voters. Is that what it says, Kathy? Yeah. And if you don't put all three cards in, in Contra Costa County, it'll beep at you. Or if you put one card in the wrong way, which is kind of impossible, you should be able to put it in any side up, um, and it'll count it. Or if we spoiled the card because you uh, made a mistake and gave you a new one, it won't let you put in the spoiled one because we mark it a special way. So um, it'll beep if something is wrong, and it'll beep for a poll worker to come and see what's happening there. So, yeah, the number of voters, I think, should match the number of people who signed in on the roster. But she said no. So we got some questions to ask Scott there. Um, I think that's all for me. And I have some questions for you as a poll watcher. Okay. Um, before we go there, Kathy, do you want to give us any feedback? about your poll working poll training I just want to throw in a general comment I had to file um, a provisional ballot once because I had moved and forgotten to re-register and the poll workers there it was in Central Concord they were very helpful and solicitous explained to me about the provisional ballot how it would you know check to make sure I hadn't double voted you know make sure I wasn't uh, registered in, in a different precinct and um, they gave me this dub and um, explained how I can check to find out that my vote's been counted eventually. So, and I think that in my other polling places I've been to, the people were pretty regular and they were happy to see me. They recognized, and not just me, everybody. They were um, very welcoming. And I think, I, I don't think you should go into the polling place with the fear that you're going to have a hard time because I think you won't. But, you know, no, that you can ask questions all you want. And the voting regulations will be there in a book uh, in the polling place. So you can look it up if you're not happy with the answer. And I have a major correction to make for Contra Costa voters. The early voting sites are not open on Monday because they're preparing for the – I'm pretty sure I'm correct on that – um, that uh, you cannot go and vote early tomorrow. Uh, I don't know if you could do it at the ROV Probably, office. As you should be able to do it at the ROV. Yeah, it makes sense to do it there, yeah. but they have closed the other stations because those are regular employees, some of them, at the early voting sites. Also, on um, if you early voters are vote by mail, uh, if you if they received your vote or you cast it between Thursday and Saturday. It will not be counted until after um, all of the voting is scanned on and processed at the ROV's office. It won't be counted until after Election Day. So if you're looking at your stub to see if they've counted your ballot, you have to wait because they have to do signature verification of um, – vote by mail, ballot, what your sign is in, what your signature is from the voter application, application to vote. And there was one other thing. Um, I'll hand it off to you if I can try okay. and remember. So one of the things I mentioned earlier was this, um, your ballot type, when you get that little ticket. Oops, did I mess up the volume?